What's your secret that could literally ruin your life if it came out? I work in advertising as a 3D lighter for very high profile clients like Apple, Google, Facebook, etc. My job is to ensure that every bit of computer generated imagery is texture and lit in a way that matches how it would look in real life. Funny thing is I'm severely red green color blind. The only way I can tell what color something is supposed to be is by sampling a pixel on the screen and reading out the red green and blue values. I've nearly memorized the hue numbers from 0 360 and where things fall in the rainbow chart. I've had shots come back to my inbox telling me that something that's supposed to be red looks too brownish green or something that's supposed to be dark green looks purple. I always say I accidentally had a hue shift on it at render time or make up some funny excuse like the lighting info from the shoot had a weird tinge to it. I've been doing this for 7 years now and the only people who know are my girlfriend and best friend and family. Haha <laughs> that's probably the most wholesome secret in this entire thread. Sales of my children's book would plummet if the peen novels I've written, under a pen name, ever got connected back to me. I admire the diversity of your skill set. At least I hope it is diverse. I made about 50 grand filming peen. Paid for college and haven't gone back to it. Would almost consider it as a fallback, but if it got out it would really freak up my current career. Thankfully this was from a day and age when pseudonyms actually kept people anonymous. I think it's fricked up how everyone loves to watch peen, but will fire someone for being unprofessional when they found out they did it in the past. Wait a sec, um, I know you. I've seen you in Gangbang Bachelor Party 1, 2, 3 and 4. You started with college lot party and then post grad horny lots before that, some of the best in the genre in my opinion. Sorry, we can't hire perverts like you, you're fired. Boss returns to office, shuts door and pulls up all the videos, um. I paid off my student loans writing smut, and I mean real smut. Kinky, fetishy, no plot stroker books. I loved every last second of it. Then I switched to writing mostly wholesome romances under a new pen name. I doubt very much that my readers would enjoy the crossover, although who knows? Stroker books. Serious question. I'm a decent writer and I spend some time fricking around with fanfic. How does one break into this kind of work? Is there a website somewhere or something? I sent in the form for one of those 90 zero CD subscription things where you get 5 free, but have to pay so much a month after that. I purposely spelled my last name wrong so when the bill came and my mum freaked out I could say mom this bill isn't for Gindo, it's for Gindo. Totally got away with my scam and my uncensored copy of him and M smiley face. My parents put our name in the phone book spelled incorrectly, so when telemarketers called they could say nobody leaves here under that name without lying. LOL. Who cares about lying to telemarketers though? Sorry I can't talk right now, I have to perform open heart surgery RN. It doesn't matter. Maybe world not ruin my life in the traditional sense. I was molested 4 years by my mum's favorite cousin. I have to see him for every family event and even though I'm in my 20s, being in his presence let alone him touching me, makes me feel 4 all over again. If it came out, I am pretty sure my family would take his side. Please do me a favor. I ask this as the wife of a man who was actually abused by a trusted family friend. Go to counseling now. People if they ever do go to counseling usually wait until their 40s. I can give you all the bad reasons. Higher chance of substance abuse. Pool coping skills. Pool relationships. But instead I am going to give you the good reasons. Your happiness. And to take back your power from that son of a bitch. You deserve to be happy and feel safe. Make the call. Please. I have lived second hand with this trauma. You deserve to heal. Username checks out. More seriously, I worked at a giant company as a picker. I discovered that through an easy exploit, I could pick 2-3 items an hour and still hit curve. Because everyone there is an idiot, they never questioned it and I was eventually promoted. The position after that had me training hundreds of people in the warehouses. I discovered that my predexa did it all and didn't do paperwork for anyone. I made the mistake of telling my boss so the job of fixing 7 years of missing paperwork fell on me. 
discovering it was a project destined to fail and hating the company, I made up hundreds of fake paperwork and filed them, entered them into the system. Again, because where I worked everyone is an idiot. No one noticed for the 3 years I worked at the company despite much of it not making any sense. Some of the names are signed hi you h frick you I hate this place. I got further promotions for my productivity and did the same thing across multiple facilities. By my estimate, roughly 30-40% of the company's Canadian records are obvious BS. Yet I was never fired or found out. What exactly is a picker? You pick parts from warehouse shelves to fill orders. So get a piece of paper with an order containing multiple screws. Pick the parts. Assemble the order. Throw away. Because my co-workers know my reddit. A few years ago I worked in a huge warehouse of about 105 people. The warehouse supplied the local Chinatown in a large city in the UK. The Chinatown businesses were mostly all owned by one billionaire. Ironically from Japan who gave each one of these businesses to one of his sons. He had six sons and, if I recall correctly, there was only eight restaurants, fast foods in the Chinatown district. Our warehouse supplied for seven, eight of those restaurants. I handled frozen food for some of the inbound trucks. I usually unloaded 300 boxes a day from trucks into the warehouse. So one day I'm unloading boxes of shrimp when I come across a small unmarked box which was a different size to all the others. I set it aside until the end of the day and continued unloading. So, when the end of the day came I cut it open to see where it should go. And all I found was pills. About 2000 pills. Small greeny, blue pills with i5x printed on them. I knew straight away that these weren't flavor enhancing tablets or anything to do with the restaurants. I got paranoid and didn't know what the frick to do. So I took about 20 pictures on my phone of the box and the pills and took two pills and hid them in my boot. And Ray sealed the box and left it in the truck. A few days later, massively coincidental, police come snooping around the warehouse after someone was poisoned in one of the restaurants. They came asking about where we ordered our stock from. Me. Being scared itless of having drugs in my boot crumbled and confessed what I had found. They informed me that they already had an open investigation into a drug trade in Chinatown, but after a few months they had nowhere else to look. They took the pills as evidence and said they'd contact me in a few days. Weeks roll by and I've forgotten it. Out of the blue one day, about 30 officers show up and started cuffing people, taking documents out of the offices and seizing computers. A young officer pulls me outside to a van and tells me that the pill I had found was the missing key linking one of the billionaire's son's business and a drug market coming in from Asia. After being questioned not much happened. Except that 33 people got arrested 17 got jail time and 4 got deported. Not sure what was going on, but apparently a bunch of Asian men and women were trafficking drugs through the warehouse and into restaurants. In which they would be sold to customers. So what's the secret? Death threats to every single person in the warehouse. Most of them said things like, When we find out who did this, we will kill you and your family. Needless to say I quit my job and moved. Yep that's good. I cheated on a spelling test in grade 4 of primary school, and was awarded the grade's best speller award at the end of year assembly. That's just being a student right there. Cheating is what got a lot of people I know through their Spanish classes. Don Diesta la biblioteca. What I have fantasized about while fapping. I think as long as you are utterly disgusted with yourself the moment that you come, you can be absolved. Beating your meat passionately thinking I'm definitely gonna do another one right after this. Then comes the moment of clarity. Then the shame. I was bored and drunk, so I peed in my own mouth to see what it was like. I am friends with a gay couple and one day his husband told me that he sells videos of him coming in his own mouth on Tumblr. I know this isn't really the same thing, but I just wanted to tell someone, because he made me promise not to lol. I was not actually born on the 1st of January, 1900. Sorry for the deception. Early 2000 peen sites. Damn you. You fricked up the peen sites statistical data. Despite what my employer, so and friends believe, I'm not really a person. 
I'm just a self-aware Reddit sock puppet account that gained sentience in 2015 and has been posting ever since. Good bot. I have no clue what I'm doing and I'm anxious 99% of the time. I abhor my wife's cooking. I eat it and tell her how good she did, but often it turns my stomach. You realize this is basically self-punishment, right? My wife cooks up a stinker every now and then, and I'm kind, but honest about them. That wasn't great. If you keep telling her she's the greatest chef ever, you'll keep eating slop. And the longer you keep it up, the harder it's going to be to break the news to her.